The Olden World Written by Tsar Yoshi Chapter 29 Him Starlet and Maple stood in the entrance to the building, backed by Sycamore as the muscular mayor bid them farewell. So, Phillies, where do you think you'll be heading next? Maple was busy nuzzling Starlight's silky, freshly groomed mane, and didn't stop when responding. And for all that, I'm famished. We're going to go to Willow's and see if she wants to share lunch, I think. You mean you're going to shamelessly raid her pantry, right? A loud voice chimed in as Amber strolled in from the pool room, dripping streams of water and not bothering to wet her towel. Sounds smashing. Mind if I come with? Hmm, you could. So fuzzy, Maple purred into Starlight's mane. The filly almost regretted not having a mirror. She had a feeling her deadpan expression could win some kind of record and wanted to see it. Well, I wish you luck with that, Sycamore chuckled, pursing her lips at Starlight's plight. Want a poncho for the road? Want a poncho for the road? I got a few spares laying around here. Maple looked up with a smile to Starlight's immense relief. We could do with that, I think. No way, no how, Amber shook her head vehemently. We're water ponies to the core, right, sis? She shoulder-bumped Maple, sending a shower of droplets her way. Maple and Starlight cringed. Sis? Starlight asked, after the water bounced harmlessly off her fluffy coat. Is that another family, but not really thing? Amber smirked wryly. Well, technically, I'm her half-aunt. But when she's older than me, that just hurts to think about. How? Starlight's face contorted. Your family tree must be really gross. <laughs> Maple laughed. Every pony in this town is related in some way or another. It comes with the demographics. That's why we never care about blood relationships. The only thing that matters is who you know, who you care about, and who you get along with. Ponchos, 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 Sycamore interrupted, humming as she bustled back into the room, carrying a thick, shiny garment. Here you go. As Maple accepted a gift, Amber sidled in and nudged Sycamore. An ale for your thoughts? Sycamore blinked. If I ever have another kid, I should name him Poncho. Just to rebel against this trend of naming foals after trees. It would be the most unique name in a thousand miles. My foal would never have to share a name with anyone. After seeing the looks the other three were giving her, she shrugged. You asked. Remind me next time I see you to do nothing but chat about the weather, Amber said, sticking out her tongue. Now, let's get going. Are you girls coming or what? She marched, still dripping, over to the door and flung it open, eliciting a chattering of bells and tromping outside. We're coming, we're coming. Maple rolled her eyes and looked aside at Sycamore. Thanks for saving her mane. I was worried it might have been a lost cause. Sycamore nodded. Just promise to let me try out a new style on you, too, one of these days. Now, away with you. She flung a hoof, mushering Maple and Starlight swiftly to the door. It slammed shut behind him. Moments later, before Sycamore had even turned away, a tumbling sound sounded from the stairs and the bleary-eyed, leaf-green kid of Fron poked down. Mom? I didn't miss them, did I? Mom? Mom? Oh, come on. Moisture from the rainstorm was still draining away as Starlight strode across the glass roadways, her broad hoofsteps necessary to keep up with Amber. Maple took the pace with similar levels of enthusiasm. Her face strained as she stepped and splashed quickly, looking as if she would much rather follow her strenuous soak with a leisurely stroll than an almost dash. Starlight stomped her way through a puddle, noting with less interest than she would have normally, given how the glass seemed to be constructed with invisible holes in it, allowing the water to sink into the ground rather than disperse entirely by runoff. Whoever had thought that up must really have had good foresight. She was still skeptical of Arambai after everything Maple and Sycamore had said, but there wasn't much doubt that the stallion's engineering abilities truly were that good. 
Memories of that conversation filling her head, Starlight recalled when she had asked a question and been rebuffed. Apparently, something about the town had changed recently, within Sycamore's memory, but she had nothing to go on. Mabel had offered to fill her in, but while well, racing hardly seemed like the time to do that, especially since her legs were complaining. So, instead, Starlight focused on not quite running, legs propelling her for the rain-soaked world. They weaved around cylindrical buildings, the stone suspended below sparkling like stars in the night sky. Hadn't someone said this trip would be short? Her lungs weren't yet burning, but her legs were to the point of noodles, and there was definitely nothing her horn could do to help. Growling in frustration, Starlight spurred herself onwards, trying to keep up with Amber's increasing pace. Uh, Amber! Maple called out, gasping. Do you mind? Not all of us are athletes! Amber pouted and slowed down, leaving Starlight time to catch her breath. Sorry? I figured we were all hungry, so might as well get there fast. It's, well... Maple swallowed. We are almost there, at least. But can we walk the rest of the way? Starlight swallowed as well, her saliva thick from exertion and likely dehydration. She eyed a puddle in the grassy road, wondering if it would be suitable for drinking. Maple made the decision for her, grabbing and nudging her along at a new, more reasonable pace. Within minutes, they were there. Willow's home was a single tower that looked to be four stories tall, a marked improvement from Maple's apparently modest too. An exuberant knock from Amber followed, and that was preceded in turn by the door swinging open. Willow was there, and she looked down and scoffed. Amber, you are not setting hoof in my house until you dry off. Go on, shoo. She waggled a hoof, at which the offending mare took off running with a gasp. Her gaze softened, and she swung the door open the rest of the way. Maple, starlight, during the town? You could say that, Maple wheezed, still slightly winded. She pointed a hoof at Starlight. Got her main fixed, beefed at Sycamore's. Mind if we drop by for lunch? Well, it's a little early in the day for that, Willow mumbled, poking her head back inside and thought. Sure, we'll have an early lunch. Come on in. At Willow's beckoning, they walked through the door. The interior design immediately stood out. Unlike Maple's partitioned shop of a home, the floor was wide open save for a few counters for cooking and an iron spiral staircase descending from a hole in the center of the ceiling. It'll take a few minutes to get lunch on, Willow explained, already turning toward the cupboards that were undoubtedly stuffed with ingredients. You're welcome to go upstairs and make yourselves at home. Farron is probably reading, and the kids should be on the third floor. Starlight? The corners of her mouth tilted upwards in a smile. I bet you'd get along very well with them, if you want. Starlight shrugged and turned toward the staircase. Okay, who's Farron? My husband, Willow replied firmly, yet with low volume. There was a note of something in her voice, sounding equal parts pride and resignation. There was an odd combination. Muttering her acknowledgement as Maple volunteered herself to help with lunch, the filly ascended a staircase. The second floor was littered with bookshelves, a double helix staircase wrapping around both far walls. Somewhere within the maze of literature was a large recliner, no doubt occupied by Farron. Starlight didn't see any reason to bother him, so she made for one of the wall stairs and continued upwards, her falls soft and soundless against the padded wooden floors. Was that good? Did she want to announce her presence? Starlight realized with some trepidation that she hadn't met a fool since... No. She shook her head as she climbed. That was in the past. That was a world of mountains away. And she'd met plenty of ponies her age since then. She just hadn't become friends with them. Not best friends, at least. There was no reason at all for her to feel nervous about this. She reached a landing which was decidedly not open like the previous floors. Instead, it had several doors and more stairs up. Willow's children all had their own rooms, apparently. 
Unsure of where to knock, she settled for clearing her throat loudly, making her presence known to all. Almost immediately, a door clicked open and a bright face with a stubby horn poked out. Hi there, are you the river filly mum was talking about? Starlight was speechless. I'm Elder, the colt said, offering a hoof. Mum told me you were a little shy and might like a friend. Want to be friends? Still, Starlight couldn't say anything. She trembled, her jaw hanging loosely. I've always wanted a friend from far away, Alder added, his fiery, rust-colored mane bobbing as he tilted his head. She said you floated in on a boat you made yourself. That sounds pretty cool. Alder blinked at her, looking slightly concerned when she still didn't respond. What's your name, River Philly? I already told you mine. Starlight didn't say anything. How could she? He was standing, right there in his burnt orange coat covered in splotchy markings of his muttered silver, holding out a hoof and asking to be friends. It was like she was staring into a mirror that showed into the past. She could already feel tears stinging at the corners of her eyes. Somehow, across all this distance, she was looking at him. Cracking like a dropped glass, Starlight burst into tears, turned tail and ran, wailing, leaving Alder sitting on the landing with an empty hoof. He looked after her, surprise and confusion covering his silver-marked face. Was it something I said? End of chapter 29